Welcome back to a very toasty day here on the farm. I thought I'd bring you along for our evening chores. First things first, we need to get uh, Bella moved out of the pen with the boar. You can see she is pregnant for sure now. So we want to get her out of the boar pen and into her own pen. Originally, we were going to have her in here and this is all grown up nice. However, we ran two by four wire along the bottom to help keep the babies in when they're born. And we don't have enough to finish. We've got this pen and Brownie's pen done, but we didn't have enough to finish the little front here and the back on this pen. So we're actually gonna move Ginger in here because she's not gonna be having babies until spring. And we're gonna put Bella in this pen. All right, come on girl. She wants that grass. Go ahead and take it down. Oh, come on. Come on. Dump it in her feeder. And she, we'll, we'll come. She'll come. Come on, girl. Hey, there's a much better patch of grass in there in your new pen, okay? You'll be with him in a few months. Come on. Come on, girl. Come on. Keep moving, girl. There you go. That a girl. That's a good girl. Good job. Look at there, fresh water. Good grief. Y'all act like y'all got a devil. She's gonna like this new home. All right, let's go get the rest of them fed. Or a bunch of pigs. This little guy's getting big. In more ways than one. Let me get it at a wide angle here. I can figure out how to run my camera. There we go. Yeah, his hernia has definitely not gotten any better. He will be getting butchered before too long. And these guys are massive. You doing all right, buddy. We're going to wait till fall, though, when it cools down a little bit before we butcher them. But he ain't going to make it, most likely. Miss Brownie is really filling out. She is looking good. <laughs> Ginger's back in the woods there. She's not worried about her food. She found her some good stuff. Come on. Wow, that was very easy. Okay, I'm gonna close this gate. Yep, go ahead and close this. Good deal. Good Bella. Good job, Bella. Man, he's got a crater over here. The water jug here leaks a little bit, this nipple. And, uh, it has caused this to become the cool spot. This is going to take a little while to fill. I think we'll do this tomorrow. As all great procrastinators say, never do today what you can do tomorrow. The cows are ready. So is Miss Willow. Hey girl, <laughs> what you doing? Yeah. Miss Buttercup, are you ready for some supper? Yes, you are. Buttercup knows exactly what she's supposed to do now. 
don't you, girl? See that bag? She's starting to milk up. It's exciting. Look at that. You're a good girl. You're a good girl. See, she's uh, she's starting to fill out her sides. If you look at her sides, she's looking good. She's getting a baby bump. Howdy, fellers. <laughs> What's up, spooky? This is our little steer. Him and the little bull calf constantly fight each other. I love to see it. Trying to establish dominance. little steer he is really taking off growing he's looking great the little bull calf he's still trying to hang on to that winter coat even though winter's long gone <laughs> but he's uh he's fattening up looking nice too ain't that right buddy yeah you gotta still uh he'll let you pet him not like he was you gotta be strategic in how you approach him but we try to give him some love in any chance we get keep him gentle he likes some ears rub <laughs> got you buddy and this rascal's just plain spooky can't get can't can't pet him anymore but that's okay we don't want nobody getting attached to him too much I don't know if you can hear that crunching, but that is our grass, or what used to be our grass. If you look out in this pasture, there is absolutely nothing growing. There's a few light green spots you can see under the trees, but everything else is brown. It's like this right here. This is our ground. We are in dire straits. So the last time we got rain was 12 days ago, any measurable rain. Uh, we got a sprinkle yesterday that didn't even, like I took a picture of the ground and you could count the raindrops on the ground. It was ridiculous. And that was out from under the trees. Under the trees got nothing. So uh, last measurable rain we got was 12 days ago. That was two tenths of an inch. Uh, the last time we got anything over before that was about two weeks. We got an inch the beginning of May, 1.2 inches. And that was the last decent rain I would consider. And uh, the problem is it's been mostly sunny and the temperatures have been 100, 101 degrees every day, especially for the last week. And before that was about 96 to 98. And there's no sign of rain to come. So we were supposed to get some rain this past week. It was a tropical system moving across the state and it ended up hitting South Florida and they got like 10 or 12 inches of rain. They're flooded down there and we're still crispy. We have gotten nothing. And it's, it's concerning to me because we don't have any grass for the cows anymore. They've eaten everything we've got. I've got this side of the driveway over here. I'm gonna put them on for the next few days just because there's a few seed heads popping up and at least it's 
better than nothing. But I don't know what we're going to do. We've been praying for rain, and we're not getting rain right now. So I am set to pull the cows off of this front hay field in about a week and a half. I'm going to stretch it out probably to two weeks since we don't have anything back here in this back for them to eat at all. But I've got to, I've got to start growing hay or we're not going to have anything for them for the winter time. So uh, a little bit stressful right now because it's out of our control. So hopefully we get some rain soon. All right, let's stay in here. I got a treat for y'all. Come on over here. We're gonna try this out. I've never tried anything like this. It's uh, a black soldier fly larva. So they're like dried maggots. And it's, uh, this is made by Grub Terra. Check out the nutritional facts here on the back. So 34% on the crude protein, high in fat, and a good source of fiber as well. And it's got a little bit of calcium and phosphorus in it, but I'm interested to see how they like these. We shall see. Let me get them open. Whew. Come on, chickens. Put some up here. No way they're not in the grass or the dirt. Well, they seem to like those. Let's put some on this platform here. Oh, they're going to town on those things. <laughs> Look like sunflower seeds, huh? I'd say that's a win. If you're interested in uh, getting some of these yourself, I'll drop a link down in the video description for you. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna feed them some of these each day. I'm not gonna give it to them all at once, but that uh, that's pretty awesome. That's a good little treat for them. Miss Buttercup's waiting to get out. Waiting patiently. You're a good girl. Let's go see if we've got any eggs. We've already gathered a few times today. All right, nothing. Ah, growling chickens. Could mean eggs. Let's see. If, yeah. Ouch. Easy. Easy. All right. You take. We got it. We're just looking under here to see what's under here. Oh yeah. Moody women. Goodness. Nothing. Hey, there's a few there too. So we'll go get the basket real quick. Here's our basket, girl. Here, let me get these for you. It's this chick right here is uh. Man, she's a meanie. Nothing more. All right. Hey, quit. Yeah, protest. Easy. About to ship the egg, girl. What is it? Heathen. All right, let me get these here. Throw it to the pigs. We do not 
let our chickens eat the eggs. So if we have one that's chipped or cracked or like that one, we throw those to the pigs. We do not let the chickens eat them because we do not want our chickens eating their eggs. So we right now we're getting about three dozen per day. And we try to gather them two or three times per day so they're not sitting in there for a very long time and giving them a chance to break any. This right here is what the yards and the fields are supposed to look like, like our tomato beds. <laughs> so we've gotten, we've let this get away from us uh, with the new baby and everything. I just haven't had time to do upkeep, unfortunately. And you can see with the sprinkler going, the grass and weeds go wild. If only we could get that to happen out there. You can see the, the distinct difference between where the sprinkler hits and where it don't. It's sad. Strawberries, I put a piece of screen over to see if shading these a little bit would help. And I think it's actually helping them a little bit. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and build a trellis deal over top of the strawberries like I did for the herb garden. This is the herb garden. So after a couple weeks, about three or four weeks of high 90 temperatures and this past week being 100 or 101, you can see the oregano is bolting, but it's still alive, even though it looks pretty rough down in, down in the deep part and the time looks really good still. By now this would have been done and gone. Same with the rosemary. Rosemary is actually still green and doing pretty good. And then uh, onions. These are just green onions, but uh, they're doing amazing. So this has been doing a great job. So I will most likely be getting a permanent solution for this because I don't think this screen is a good long-term option. It's, it's a double layer of just like window screen, but uh, it's working for now. These little ladies are growing. They're doing so well. So you can see the dark colored ones are the Easter Eggers. And then the rest are Rhode Island Reds. They're kind of in that ugly stage right now, but they're doing great out here on pasture. So before we part ways, I want to give you a little bit of an update on Elena, our little newborn baby. Uh, it has been a crazy two weeks. She's just over two weeks old now, and uh, she's a huge blessing to our family. But let me tell you, it has been challenging. So she has uh, one of the most chill attitudes and probably one of, if not the most chill baby we've ever had. Eats great, sleeps wonderful. She only wakes up like three, two to three times at night. It's, it's amazing. I mean, we don't even know how to, to act with that. And she eats during the day, every two hours, eating very good. She does have reflux and, or it's, it's called a GERD, I think. Uh, it's a severe reflux. Most of all of our other kids have had it and uh, we're kind of used to it at this point. So she does have that. We put her on some formula that helps with that as well. And, uh, so we're thankful. We'll take our wins where we can get them. She has had a very busy week this week. We, we uh, I can't remember what we even had Monday. But Tuesday, she went to the orthopedic surgeon over in Gainesville. It's about, I don't know, about an hour away from us, 45 minutes to an hour. So it's not terribly far, but it's nonetheless time. Went to the orthopedic surgeon, they checked her out and decided to immediately put her in casts on her legs for the clubbed feet. One is worse than the other. One foot's kind of rolled under. The other one's just kind of turned in a little bit, but they both got to be done together. So even once they get the left side corrected, they're going to still have to leave a cast to hold it until the other one's good. And then they can get her in braces and rods and all that good stuff. I don't even know what all that entails. It's kind of a new learning experience for us, but, uh, we're trying to do everything within our power 
to make sure she has as close to a normal life as possible. We know there's probably going to be some things that she's not going to be able to do. It's not going to be because we didn't try to help her out. So it's going to be rough for the first couple of years of her life. We know that, but we're ready for it. And with the Lord's help, we're going to make it through and persevere. <laughs> so she's in cast from her hips all the way down to just the tips of her toes stick out. So that night after she got her cast on, it was very uncomfortable for her. She cried a lot that night, didn't sleep much. The following morning was her second appointment with the massage therapist. This guy is awesome. He's in Lake City, so we travel up there. It's a little over an hour for us to travel up to Lake City for him every week. He worked on some things on her, and immediately she saw relief, which was amazing. I've, I've never been to a massage therapist. I've always been scared. I've always heard too many crazy stories and never wanted to get involved in that sort of thing. But... Uh, this, this gentleman's doing, been doing it, I don't even know how long, 30 years, 35 years, something like that. And it is the best I've ever seen. He, he will hold the baby. He's very gentle. He's done massages and m muscle work on babies for as long as he's been doing this, and he's really good. And he even found some stuff that the doctors had not told us about. And said, it, like, one of her hips was slightly dislocated, he could feel, and when he was working on some of the stuff around that. Some of her pec muscles are super tight in her neck. Doctors never mentioned anything about that. And uh, he was able to work on some of that stuff and uh, release some of the tension in her hips and her feet. And it was, it was amazing to watch her just melt right there, like relief, like, oh man, you just hit a good spot. <laughs> so he worked on her for about 45 minutes. It might even been close to an hour. And, uh, she was great after that. She's not had any trouble with her feet anymore with pain, and it's been great. So he's been doing a lot of good for her. And uh, Thursday, Thursday, I, um, I've, I've got the greatest bosses in the world. They've been letting me work my work schedule around some of these appointments, and uh, I've been so backed up with work. Thursday, Katie had her normal just follow-up appointment two weeks postpartum. The baby had her two-week appointment with the pediatrician. And uh, I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna stay home with the kids, watch the kids, do a lot of my computer work that I need to get done. I had some lumber takeoffs to do for some houses. I'm like, I just need to be able to focus on this and get it done. So I sent Felicity, she was the driver and carried the baby for, for Katie. They went, pediatrician appointment went great. Went to her postpartum appointment, checked her blood pressure. Her blood pressure's up around 150. They checked it again a little later, it's still about 145. And they're like, listen, we're not gonna force you to go to the hospital, but you need to go to the hospital. You need to go over there and let them monitor you because this could be postpartum preeclampsia. Never heard of this. I'm like, you gotta be kidding. So here I am stuck at home with the kids and my wife's over there having to take herself to the hospital or Felicity's taking her to the hospital. And I'm like, man, I have screwed up. Trying to get caught up on work. That was a bad idea. <laughs> I should be there. So now I'm stressed out because my wife's over in the hospital, labor and delivery over there. They hook her up to the monitor, do some blood work, do a urine sample. And they hook her up there like at least an hour we're going to monitor you. So her blood pressure ended up coming down to the 130s. And just so you know, my wife has perfect blood pressure. It's usually around like in the 1-teens and not even up to 120 for the high number. The bottom number was actually okay, and it was good. It was the top number that was high. Apparently, you can get stroke and blood clots and all that good stuff from this. It's pretty serious. So I'm like, listen, if they say you need to go, you need to go get checked out. So she went over there and got checked out. We're praying. She ends up, uh, Felicity texts me about an hour later and says, hey, blood work and urine sample came back perfect. Nothing wrong. Uh, they told her just take it easy and check her blood pressure and monitor at home. We're coming home. So I'm like, praise the Lord. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I'm about one, <clears throat> one more stressful event away from a heart attack myself, you know. <laughs> so the Lord was merciful to us again this week. The devil's been keeping us on our knees. And uh, I think that's probably where we just need to stay for right now. Uh, today we went and met with the occupational therapist and the physical therapist. Each of those were about 45-minute appointments. And 
very encouraging from those therapists what they came up with so i'm going to get up here off my knees for a few minutes <laughs> so our doctor our orthopedic surgeon basically when she did her analysis was like oh yeah her elbows are stiff there's really no crease more than likely never going to have any use in her elbows uh she can do this she can do that and eh, not real good in movement of here well we'll see what we can do you know let's just go ahead and put her in casts we're not going to worry about any of the other stuff right now and we're like <clears throat> This ain't gonna fly. <laughs> this is not gonna fly. We are, this is not how we're rolling. So we went to the therapist today, the head therapist, she's awesome. She's like, oh no, no, we, we don't do anything like that. We, we don't give up on anything until we're exhausted on options. So uh, they did a lot of testing on checking on different things and they have us set up, occupational therapy wants us to come twice a week. Physical therapy wants us to come once a week. We have to go to the orthopedic surgeon once a week to get the cast redone. And we have our massage therapist that we have once a week. We're gonna have a busy life. <laughs> so, and that's just the normal stuff right now. That's not counting her pediatrician checkups, which she's gotta have, but you know. It is what it is. And uh, any surgeries that she may end up having to have in the future. And then next week, she's got to meet with a therapist for her upper extremities. I'm sorry, he's not a therapist. He's a surgeon. We're going to be for, you know, any shoulder, elbow, wrist stuff. And they're most likely going to start using splints on her, molded splints on her arms to start working and getting some of that stuff moving. So basically those two appointments that we're going to have to go to for uh occupational and the one for physical they are going to be coaching us on what we're supposed to be doing we have to do therapy on her they said every diaper change so basically every two hours throughout the day we're going to be feed her change her diaper work on her with therapy and see if we can get some of the movement back into her limbs so it's going to be exciting <laughs> so that's where we're at thank y'all so much for watching our channel and supporting us we greatly appreciate it we'll see you next time